welcome back to the build series of the RS001 Group S Audi Quattro. Uh, welcome to part five. Today we're gonna to cover the car in the workshop and this is the final build. So we've got the gearbox and driveline parts in the vehicle and today we're gonna to go through some of the parts that are gonna be used on the vehicle um, for, the, for the final time. And uh, we've got the dashboard that we're going to cover today, um, which is upstairs, we'll go upstairs in a minute. And then um, we've got pedal boxes, we've got all sorts of really cheap, inexpensive parts. Um, well, according to the wife. Um, and so, yeah, we've got a load of parts that we're going to go through. And so, yeah, please like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And thank you so much for all the feedback and comments and all that sort of stuff. And we've had a couple of really exciting people that have reached out to us um, in the last couple of days. And I kid you not, it is worth the wait because hopefully we're going to get some people down and we'll get them a bit of a um, we'll get a bit of an interview with them and then we can sort of let them explain how they were involved with this original project back in the day. So it's gonna be super exciting. So yeah, please follow and watch along. So one of the first jobs that you got to do when the car's back from paint is obviously the final assembly. So everything needs to be cleaned. Uh, the correct nuts and bolts need to be bought. So. I've already been down to Silverstone probably about five times, buying all different nuts and bolts. Um, and the joy of doing that is, is you can kind of buy the exact bolt for the job. And so things like the engine mount bolts and stuff like that, they're all like an aircraft grade bolt and nut. And yes, they're expensive and whatever, but you know, always you get failures on cars as they say it's that you know um one pound part isn't it so that's why you put two pound parts in okay and so the next thing that we need to do once we've got some of the major components in the car is we need to do all the plumbing for the fluid systems and also the braking system and the air jack system and the fire system as well so we've gone through and just sort of i've put all the major components into the vehicle and then now it's just a matter of like ordering up all the little nice fittings um, working out where you're going to run the fittings and lines through the vehicle as well because you know you don't want to be stepping on hoses and you don't want them in vulnerable positions and you don't want them in the way of stuff to do your maintenance and stuff like that as well so you've got to try to plan these out so that they're sort of a little bit unseen when they're finished really. And, and that's kind of what we're gonna go through and probably hopefully do over the next week and Christmas if we don't eat too much and stuff like that. So um, that's the next job on the board really. And one of the things that we um, also are gonna do after that is once once you sort of, you've got to build it from the inside outwards, the car, so all the hard parts, like the hoses and stuff like that, and hard lines, they're going to be put in place first because to try to make those hard lines go over pipes or under pipes or wiring and stuff like that, it's, it's very hard and complicated to, to get a clean finish of the vehicle because it, it really pays dividends of having all your hoses and plumbing correct and secured correctly as well because you... You don't want pipes rubbing through on things or you don't want um, uh, parts that are hard to get in, hard to like clean and stuff like that as well, the chassis. So, you know, there, there's lots of aspects that you need to sort of do really. So that's, that's next week's job. So we've got the um, gearbox in now and the engine is in the vehicle now, and that's that's in for the um, final time for the build, really, so we're not gonna have that back out again now. And one of the problems that I did notice is like, we had a mock-up dry sump system on the um, dummy engine that we had, but we didn't have all the bloody fittings on it, did I? And of course, now the fittings that are meant to be on the dry sump system they touch on a bit of the chassis and stuff like that. So I'll show you in a sec that, you know, 
I've had to make like a plan B and C already for those sort of fittings. And, and, and they're all the complications that you always come up against when you're building a car like this because everything is bespoke, everything is handmade, and you can't, I mean, you could, you could barely buy an Audi Quattro part, let alone a Group S part, because they just don't exist. So that's why you just gotta make it yourself and it just takes time. So you, you just gotta do it. That's all it is, you know? And for me, this is the most enjoyable part. You know, you could really take your time and if you just do everything the best you can, then that's all that matters, doesn't it? So, you know, hopefully it'll be reliable and, and that's why you've got to spend the time now is to get all the right nuts and bolts in there and stuff like that and make sure everything's tight, everything's properly run in the car so you haven't got hoses rubbing and stuff like that so you could potentially get the reliability out of it. So, you know, the thing's going to be so highly strung anyway that yes, we're going to have failures. Yes, the thing's going to probably break down. Um, and no, we're not gonna crash it. So that's fine, because you know we, we don't crash things. And then um, hopefully we'll just have some fun with it, really. That's the main thing, so yeah. This is Grumpy's dashboard. So like a traditional Audi Quattro, we've gone for some old school gauges. And I'll tell you what, compared to modern electronics, old school gauges are nearly dearer than modern electronics because by the time you buy each individual gauge and the sensor and all the other bits and pieces that soon adds up i'll tell you what but something unique to this dashboard is um we've got um oil pressures fuel pressures speedo rpm we've got um oil warning lights we've got gear change shift lights we could adjust the um abs braking system from here as well battery voltage got fuel level warning alarms for fuel lights We've got a co-driver's terror trip um, over here and behind it, got another Motec dash. So, and what we've done with this car is um, the engine ECU is linked to the um, dashboard here. And then this dashboard actually drives the individual gauges. So I've sat down and made um, some two dimensional tables to um, output a signal from this to match up with the corresponding um, markers of the gauges. So I don't have to um, add extra sensors to the vehicle. So for instance, um, engine water, water temperature sensor, that then goes into the ECU, does all the cold start, radiator fans on and off and stuff like that. And then gets canned across to the dashboard here. And then we have an output table to then make this gauge work um, the same as you know it should be reading a sensor by itself so it just sort of it simplifies the car a little bit and just makes things a lot cleaner and neater really and then that's it really the the dashboard um, as you see underneath all the wiring comes to one multi-plug an auto sport connector and then I've got the loom all nicely cable tied in, so I don't need to get under the dash and just add a load of wires and stuff like that for it, really. So we should be able to, if you have to service anything, you could just unplug it, then put it, put it, you know, aside and away you go. Everything's got labels. We've got some spares in there as well, just in case we need to add spares. And then, yeah, that's all we've got to do. How long for the did it dashboard. take you to get it that neat? <laughs> this is a week's work just in doing this. You know, like by the time you put all these nice shrink boots on and, you know, like cable tie holders and drill all your holes and these are the plugs for the um, laptop connection. So I could just reach under the dashboard and plug these in and then, yeah, away we go really. So, but yeah, hopefully this will all pay off because, you know, not many people want to show that underneath of the dashboards are race cars and, you know, I like, I'm pretty proud of this one. This one, this one looks all right. So, yeah. Hopefully it should be nice and reliable and it should just work. And we've even gone to the trouble of like, even all the um, bulbs for the gauges, we've converted all those to LED lights as well. So it just draws less current on the um, electrical system. And then, you know, we don't need to use the alternator as much as well. So yeah, that's it. So yeah, these are some of the parts that we've got for the actual um, Group S project. And 
to be honest, I love this table. There's so many good parts here and it's been a, a real privilege and a good, you know, Christmas present buying each individual part. I can tell you that now. Um, one of the thing that's going to give us a massive advantage is the pedal box. So Alcon have come to the party and we've got their latest and greatest GT3 pedal box for the vehicle. And this is actually available for slide at slides as well. So we can adjust the height of it. It incorporates all the driver wire sensor for the, um, <laughs> so, let me just go get him. We're back. The dog hasn't eaten anybody, so it's okay. Yes, so this is a pedal box. So that's going to be the drive by wire sensor for the um, throttle pedal. So that'll work that. That'll work the this electronic drive by wire throttle. This will allow us to do the anti-lag strategy on the vehicle as well. And it will also allow the gear change throttle blipping to occur as well. So that'll be all automatic. So I can just hit the brake pedal, then the gear lever strain gauge will then detect that I'm going down a gear. That will allow the MoTeC ECU to blip the throttle for down changes. And then I'll look like a heel and toe god on the DART logging file, because every throttle blip will be exactly the same and perfectly timed. So watch that. Um, other thing that we've got, these are all the dampers for the vehicle. So latest KW shock absorber. So we've got bump, rebound, high and low speed adjustments, and we've got a blow off valve as well. So basically when you hit stuff um, very hard and fast, this will be, allow the, the vehicle to be fine tuned for the um, sudden impact of holes and not holes. And this will be very important because one of the events that we want to do, the the road and terrains like getting worse and worse every year. So allowing all this adjustability into the vehicle's dampers will help us a lot, okay? So these are all on little roller bearings. They're just beautiful. So uh, this is the water system header tank for the vehicle. We run a water pressure sensor. So that will uh, tell us if there's any like head gasket issues or like a sudden loss in water pressure um, if the cooling system has got a leak or something like that so that'll help as well and another thing as well we've got racing lines coming down in the next week or so i think it is depends how they go and then they're going to come and um, do the plumbing for the vehicle so we're going to use their super light range for the vehicle and um all their hoses are super lightweight, they're very flexible, and you know, they're all crimped ends. So we'll be able to mock up the vehicle, get all the exact orientation of the 90 degree bends and the straight bends and stuff like that. And then that will allow them to be crimped and then we could heat proof them. And then that'll be it really for those. And then other stuff, keep finding parts that Mac the dog has been eating. So to me, it doesn't look that tasty, but to him, it's obviously a quite a good treat, isn't it? So, but hey, it's all part of the build, isn't it? So yeah. So thank you very much. Keep the comments coming. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you don't watch the video, don't watch the video, that's fine. So yeah, but please follow along and we'll keep you updated. So one of the last things that the panel beater said, Mr. Blobby, was like, make sure you get congestion charge mm. sorted, a Euless. Is that a scratch on the rear, the rear bumper there already? Might be. <laughs> oh, Mr. Blobby's going to string you up. You better not show that. <laughs> you better not show that. Oh, He's going to be pit. I freaking scratched that when I was moving some parts around. So don't you show that. What was the first thing you said, Dave? Don't scratch it. <laughs> and pay your Euless charge. And I forgot to pay the Euless charge as well. So I've got a 90 pound fine coming. So that's why these builds cost so much money, don't they? You drive along thinking, I've got a new race car. <laughs> <laughs>